Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. Welcome. And we are continuing to talk about um, the soul and the spirit and our mentorship. Again, we're going to talk about this for a little while because this is a very important subject for us to really meet and really confront. I pray that you guys are having a blessed day. Amen. We're still answering the question here from um, one of our team members, Kimberly. She says, how can I switch from living in the soul to living from the spirit in our last video we talked about living from the soul we're going to talk about it a little bit more and that word there from is what we're focusing on the bible says that we uh the, we shall be saved by grace through faith by grace through faith so you have to enter through something from something so in order for us to live from through the spirit, we have to live from the soul. So you can't live through something without coming from something. Amen. Where most Christians get stuck is they get stuck in the soul. So now they're, they've never reached bedrock. They've never reached the source. And the source is always in the spirit. Even your soul is a result of the spirit. And how God touched your spirit produced a soul in you. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that God breathed into man and man became a living soul. So the minute that spirit touched your body, it left an impression on you called that created the unique expression of the spirit of God called a soul, which is very unique in this world in this universe in all of creation the soul of man is very unique and that god began to first implement a part of himself into another realm this is why the angels they questioned god when he created man they said who is man that you are mindful of him that you set him above everything You've set him above everything in creation. So your soul is very unique. Your soul to the Lord is very valuable. Can I help somebody today? Your soul is very valuable, but in itself, it has no profit. I've said this before, and it's something that we need to be able to see in order to understand how we actually are called to function in this life your soul is very valuable to the lord but in itself it's not profitable at all there's nothing profitable in the soul outside of the spirit of the lord because when you live in your soul and from your soul when you are a soulish person you're attempting to live and express life in yourself which is impossible there's no profit in it at all it's like a lamp trying to produce light without electricity. So you need a spirit. Your soul, even alone, <coughs> needs a spirit, whether that spirit is the spirit of God or even another spirit. It needs a spirit to function. So most of what you think you're functioning in is actually from the inspiration of a spirit one way or another. Because when Adam and Eve fell, they didn't remove themselves from the spirit of God and become independent. No, their spiritual source was transferred from that of the spirit of the Lord now to the spirit of Satan. And the spirit that possessed the snake now became the source from which their life began to express life. It became the source from which their life began to express their life. Now, uh, so it's important to understand that your soul does not function on its own. There's no profit in the soul by itself, but the soul needs a spirit to function just as much as a lamp or a light bulb alone has no profit. There's no use for it outside of the fact that there needs to be some source of electricity for that thing to function. Now, I'm going to revisit this question here. She says, how can I switch from living in the soul to living from the spirit? And I want somebody to understand this. You need the soul. 
just as much as you need your spirit, just as much as you need your body to function in this earth realm, you need your soul. It's important that we have a proper balance. We can't be so spiritual that we neglect our soul, but we can't be so soulish that we misplace our spirit. And we also need to find balance in every part of a spirit, soul, and body. This is the total man. This is the wholeness of Christianity that God wants us to begin to be able to achieve. We are closer to achieving this wholeness than any generation has ever been. Because God has been restoring. He's been restoring different parts of the body of Christ throughout the generations. We've seen restorational moves of God and the gifts of God have been restored. We're in a place now where the restoration work of the Lord has been at its greatest place. And God has brought us into a fullness of the spirit. He's brought us into a fullness of the kingdom. Now, before we close out today, I want you to catch this. It's not real to you until it enters the soul. So you need the soul. The soul is the vehicle for every spiritual thing that God wants to express through your life. Even the faith that you have cannot be expressed without your soul. So what does that mean? Your soul makes it reality. Your soul makes it reality. Even the things that the Lord has laid up for you, even your own faith is not profitable in this realm unless it becomes or takes on some form of reality. Now, we're starting to get into the fourth part or the fourth way that we can begin to walk and live in a new level and a new dimension of the spirit and that is meditation meditation so it's not real until it enters the soul so your spirit needs the soul just as much as your soul needs the spirit we're going to talk about it in the next couple of videos god bless you guys enjoy the rest of your day meditate on these things Think on these things. Allow the Lord to give you even revelation where you are and post your questions in your comments below. If you're watching this video on YouTube, sign up for our mentorship program. This is a complimentary video and we won't be doing these public for um, every time, but I want you to sign up so that you can have access to all of our daily mentorship videos on our website. Listen, God bless you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.